Hey guys, another Garb August uh, update from me. Um, now that I'm back regularly posting a little more regu regularly now, uh, views are way down, so I've decided to uh, revamp this channel. From now on, I will be, do be doing a daily 40 to 60 minute video recapping the American election and giving you all my thoughts on that and telling you how to vote. Uh, because I know best and I am the most informed person. So that's what we'll be doing from now on. Um, I will also be giving vaccine advice and recapping the highest rated comedy podcasts. Uh, I'll recap the Joe Rogan experience. I'll recap uh, ones with other people who look like Joe Rogan experience and are friends of his and have hot podcasts. So you don't have to watch those anymore. You just watch this. But just wrapping up my booktube account here. That's all. I'm kidding on all that. I hope people know. Uh, I'll, I'm going to cover uh, The Lone Wolf one more time, which is Barry Malzberg's executioner style 70s series i know people are really excited to hear more about this i can tell from all the enthusiasm of my previous posts you, everybody's like pete mike whatever your name is give us more alone wolf mike berry content okay so uh there are 14 of these books i was going to read all 14 then i got a better idea which is why not really make it uh, more garb August by reading these books in the way they would have been read at the time before ebooks when they would just appear at the 7-Eleven or whatever you just find whatever ones you got so I decided to read just randomly I could have done it more randomly I still did read in order I read I think six of them of the 14 uh, but I, I kept in order what I should have done is read number three first then then number 14 then back to number one but I, I read a few of them the first one was Night Raider the first book uh, which recaps in about mm, three paragraphs his origin story uh, before he he goes nuts and decides to kill every uh, drug dealer in the world um, he is a Vietnam vet he is a New York City narcotics officer whose girlfriend uh, becomes a drug addict and dies and so he decides to kill every drug uh, dealer in New York and then around the country. It's a little thin of a, of a story. Uh, we don't have to worry though because Barry Malzberg revises it. Every single volume makes it a little better. Um, so I'll, I'll discuss it more in the second book. Anyway, Night Raider just shoots. He just kills a bunch of people in New York. He's pretty good at killing people. He, like I say, he was a, a, a Vietnam veteran. He was already a, a New York City cop. Then he joined uh, joined up to go to Vietnam because he wanted to see what that was about because he didn't trust the media. Um, Cops at the time were exempt from the draft, uh, which uh, Malzberg realized and worked that into the stories. And because this guy, this guy makes this guy even more of a hard ass. He wanted to go see for himself. He was traumatized by Vietnam. He got back to uh, New York City, resumed his uh, police career. They gave him a job. This is so 70s. This is, uh, this is actually pretty good the more I think about it. Um, the police are so corrupt in New York. This is the time, you know, early uh, time of Serpico and that. Uh, that they And that and they love, uh, his, his bosses loved that he was uh, fought for his country and made the department look good because all the other cops were corrupt cowards and none of them would go to to Vietnam this is you know this is the backstory of this so they gave him they put him in narcotics in the in the first book it's like they gave him a narcotics as a reward I'm like what the hell that sounds like an awful job it's later elaborated that they give him a job in narcotics so he can steal a lot so he can get a lot of graft because the the police 
force is very corrupt. Of course, he's not corrupt, so once he starts working there, he doesn't want to take any graft, and that's part of the reason he becomes a lone wolf. The lone wolf, I think his first name is Bart or Bert, I forget already. His last name is Wolf, W-U-L-F-F, -F -F, Wolf. He's the lone wolf. Um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, that they do in these books. And uh, Malzberg, I'm not sure what his politics were. I think he's probably, I think he's fairly conservative now. At the time, it seems like he was kind of more of a hippie. Um, you know, but these books are, he, he knew what his audience was. These are definitely targeted on, and this 19... Um, 73 this star series runs from 73 to 75 definitely targeted at nixon's silent majority generation so this is for the guys for the guys the middle-aged guys who are mad that you know the hippies run everything and 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 it's you know it's not winking or it's not satirical or anything it's it's really written from that point of view and there's just like decadence everywhere and Drugs are ruining everything. So we got the lone wolf there who literally in the books I've read probably destroys at least 40 million kilos of heroin by burning it or throwing it in lakes or whatever. And hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think he takes some of the money and uses it to fund his one-man war against the drug dealers. It's not a war against the mafia or anything. It's just like sort of generic drug international drug conspiracy although not run by the cia or anything like that would have would have been good if this series had gone into the 80s you know into the uh into the uh iran contra era um you know that era of that scandal that would have been good because it could have he could be fighting the cia while the cia is secretly bringing drugs into the city too it doesn't go in that deep anyway so i decided after i read number one to read number four which is Desert Stalker. And for frequent viewers of this channel, I believe there are uh, several of you. On my last video about this same Deathless series, I discussed The Executioner, and I'm pretty sure I read two of those books, at least. I read the first one, War Against the Mafia, and I read the ninth one, which was Vegas Vendetta. So I thought, what perfect way I should keep the same thing with this and go skip to number four, which is Desert Stalker, which is the Lone Wolf's uh, Las Vegas adventure. I believe that that's the Golden Nugget there. And I think on the Executioner book, it also used the Golden Nugget. Of course, uh, Vegas was much smaller in the early 70s. Uh, so there were fewer landmarks anyway uh this one we get a recap uh, i didn't miss anything because another uh, excellent and very handy uh technique that malsberg uses in these books is to recap everything that happened in the first two chapters you know fill, filling a lot of pages up by explaining what he did in boston before he went to las vegas what he did in Philadelphia before he went there. And so I learned about all the money he's burned and all the drugs he's uh, thrown into the water, into the Boston Bay and that kind of thing. So everybody pretty much hates him now. The cops hate him because he's ruining all their graft. Uh, the gangsters hate him because he's destroying all their drugs. Um, something going on with my screen here. Interesting thing for Malzberg, if anybody knows his science fiction work, it's very, very horny. Uh, a lot of sex in Malzberg's books. A lot of sex done humorously, so I thought there'd be sex in these books too because it's, it's kind of a mainstay of this. There's hardly any. He has that ex-girlfriend who... It's just recapped in the in the first pair. We 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 don't meet her until a flashback in like I think book seven or something like that about what happened. It's uh, it's it's really a weak motivation, which is why he he ramps it up in later books. He retcons it to to be instead of just his girlfriend, it's his fiance. Um, today, I think it would be his daughter, and uh, it's kind of unclear how old he is supposed to be. I don't think he's really 
I don't think when Mosby wrote these books, he conceived of them as, as being this old as he is for marketing purposes on the cover of the book. Seems like early 40s or something. I think he's probably like 25 or 26. It's not really said, though. But if he was this age, it would be a much stronger motivation if his daughter uh, was, of course, his estranged daughter by his ex-wife, who hates him. Um, and if she were the one to die of a drug, a drug overdose, then that would really send him off on the Satan, because he's, he's full of anger and hate at these drug dealers, these damn drug dealers. He's destroy, He so effectively destroys the heroin trade in the United States in these 14 books that I believe he's single-handedly responsible for the fentanyl crisis because there just wasn't enough heroin in the future for people uh, who wanted heroin that they had to, to go to other drugs. You know, and he probably, and probably the crack uh, academic before, epidemic before that and everything, you know, he's really good at killing drug dealers. So they're fun. Uh, let's see what else I read. The next one I read, I decided to skip a little farther ahead, go halfway through the Peruvian nightmare. I thought, let's, let's go, let's go exotic. Oh, look, I, you can, I can remove people from the background if I wanted to edit this. Uh, the Blood Quest of the Lone Wolf, Mountains and Jungles. This one's pretty good. Um, pretty sure, seems pretty unlikely that Malsberg uh, took a trip to Peru to research this novel. Mike Berry, I mean, not Mike Berry, uh, Bert Wolf or Bart Wolf, what's his name? Or Barry Wolf? No, I think it's. I, I really should know that much. Uh, really doesn't like Peru. Uh, thinks it's a real crap country. Uh, he does, I think he does kind of meet a woman in this. He kind of gets a. kind of hooks up with a. Soldier of Fortune type guy there. It's got a really good ending where they're just flying off over this mountain. Um, you know, they all run together. Here's a picture of Mr. Malsberg. These, this, this is, uh, I'm not sure what this book is from. Starkhouse is the publisher of these books right now. These are not the Starkhouse covers, pub, uh, covers but he, uh, Starkhouse also put out several collections of his short stories, and I think he really is. Uh, master short story, science fiction short story writer. Um, but I think I was sort of talking about the sex. There's not really many sex scenes or anything in that, which, which is good. Uh, but I think it's because... And that's so different than his other books, but I think because his other books about sex, they're, they're never... Like, like the gamesmen, there's a lot of sex in that, but gonna cough so better pause but there's no eroticism his, his sex scenes are not erotic they're more like about fumbling and inadequacy and uh, embarrassment and sexual problems that really fit with his so the social satire of his science fiction stories his great works of science fiction and so they they really don't fit in this world very well so I think he was smart to stay away from them but might have cost him some sales, I guess. Then I read number 13. and went almost to the end. Then I was going to go back. Oh, where is it? Oh, maybe I didn't pull down one of these. Oh, my goodness. Today. Okay. I guess I didn't get it. Killing Run, Peruvian Nightmare, Desert Stalker, Night Raid. Okay. I got to get back to my spreadsheet. I read number 13. Looks like I did 